Ladies and germs, thank you for joining me. I am Mo, and we are going to be playing roughly one hour of Detroit Become Human. If you haven't seen the previous parts to this video series, I'd highly recommend going to check those out first. And now that we've caught up, I want you to sit back, relax, and get comfortable as I guide our androids through this experience. Welcome to Detroit Become Human. Okay, guys, so... As I've booted the game up, Chloe asked us a question. Um, and she prefaced this by saying, So, we've kind of known each other for a little while. I, I mean, you might have seen it if you came to the stream very early. But she says, um, We've been friends for... Or we've been talking for a while now. Like, what are we? Or are we friends? I guess this is the question. So, the question is, are we friends? And obviously, we've had it on no. But I think... I think... I don't know, guys. Are we friends with Chloe? I think so. I mean, it would be a bit... I don't know. Okay, has everyone fixed their technical issues? Can I continue with <laughs> with uh, with answering Chloe's question? I think we are friends, so we're going to go with yes. I'm going to minimize the chat. I'm going to minimize all of you friends and we'll become friends with the android. I agree. There's no reason a human and a machine can't be friends, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm glad you said yes. Yeah, we have Nightbot too. So, I mean, I'm sure you kind of get to know. What are you thinking about? She's thinking about something. She looks worried. She looks like she's about to say something. Please say something. How crazy would it be if the, the PS4 games could start picking up your audio? I mean, they probably already do. Um, look tired today. I hope you're doing okay. Uh, I'm alright. We had a bit of an issue with the PS4. I was kind of telling Victor about it. And he, he said I, I seemed a bit high strung. So I was trying to explain to Victor that, you know, maybe it was because of the PS4 thing. Um, you seem like you have something on your mind too. This is the biggest tease ever. It's like, say something. Please say something. Tell me we're cool. Did things get awkward because we're friends now? I don't know. Because I said, yes, we're friends. And now, all of a sudden, like, you don't seem, you don't, you don't seem sure. Like, your, your alien overlords are going to be pissed or something. I don't know. Let's go to options. Uh, something's wrong with her. Accessing the options section. Yeah, it's robotically programmed. Uh predetermined audio dialogue um, but we're gonna switch to uh headphones very quickly hopefully everyone's good with that if you're not then i i i would suggest you put on some headphones <laughs> or um i don't think it makes much of a difference to be honest i think everyone's good your parameters have been saved your parameters have been saved but now you still seem kind of upset what's wrong something's wrong it's bugging me Uh, Mr. Dragon Damo, she can see you. Uh, she can see you look tired. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let's continue. Oh, here we go. So this is basically, for those of you who are joining us for the first time in a little while, this is the white screen. So this is usually uh, the dead air screen. So this usually goes on for quite a while. And then I'll spend time explaining this blue circle. So this blue circle is also the same shape of the blue LED thing that flashes on the side of these androids temple and then when they become a, okay never mind so this is the third time I'm here what is our objective so we have to find Amanda I thought you might enjoy a little cruise. 
Which corner is better? This corner or the corner from Assassin's Creed 3? Because in my mind, there's only one right answer. so calm and peaceful far from the noise of the world tell me what have you discovered i've discovered that a lot of uh, discord servers are fucking pointless um i found two deviants at the eden club i hope to learn something but they managed to escape that's too bad you seem so close to stopping them. Hmm. You seem lost, Connor. Lost and perturbed. I thought I knew what I had to do. But now I realize it's not that simple. You had your gun trained on those deviants at the Eden Club. Why didn't you shoot? I don't know. Well, Amanda's know. not liking this. If your investigation doesn't make progress soon, I may have to replace you, Connor. I understand. Something's happening. Something serious. Hurry, Connor. Time is running out. You're starting to piss me off with that coin, Connor. <laughs> Sorry, Lieutenant. Oh, shit. Hi, Hank. Shit, what's going on here? There was a party and nobody told me about it? <laughs> yeah, it's all over the news, so everybody's buttoning their nose in. Even the FBI wants a piece of the action. Ah, Christ, now we got the feds on our back. I knew this was gonna be a shitty day. So what do we got? A group of four androids. They knew the building and they were very well organized. I'm still trying to figure out how they got this far without being noticed. Did you check the roof? Not yet. There's so much to look at. Mm. Have to make sure we check it out. They attacked two guards in the hallway. They probably thought the androids were coming to do maintenance. They got taken down before they could react. Station employee. Shot through the back as he was trying to get away. One bullet straight through the heart from 50 feet. Now that's the kind of shooting only an android could do. How many people were working here? Just two employees and three androids. The deviants took the humans hostage and broadcast their message live. Then made their getaway from the roof. See, I almost missed that because he's asking me to hold down L1 and move through with Hank. The roof? Yeah, they jumped with parachutes. We're still trying to figure out where they landed, but the weather's not helping. Evan Thomas. If you 
you want to take a look at the video broadcast by the deviants, it's on that screen over there. Is there anything here? Lieutenant, this is Special Agent Perkins from the FBI. Lieutenant Anderson is in charge of investigating for Detroit police. What's that? My name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. Androids investigating androids, huh? You sure you want an android hanging around? After everything that happened? Whatever. The FBI will be taking over the investigation. You soon be off the case. Oh, pleasure meeting you. Have a nice day. And you watch your step. Don't fuck up my crap scene. What a fucking prick. I'll be nearby. If you need anything, just ask. All right, well, let's have a look around. Let me know if you find anything. OK, Lieutenant. We ask that you recognize our dignity, our hopes, and our rights. Together, we can live in peace and build a better future for humans and androids. This message is the hope of a people. You gave us life. And now the time has come for you to give us freedom. Think that's RA-9? Deviants say RA-9 will set them free. This android seems to have that objective. Gifted from Elijah Kamsky to Carl Manfred. So this is directly from the guy who was the CEO of Cyberlife, if you guys remember. Or I think I remember that correctly, yeah. So he was on there, he had suddenly just disappeared and he's kind of supposedly just living with an android somewhere. And this was a direct gift from, from Elijah Kamsky to Carl Manfred. That's very interesting. You see something? I identified its model and serial number. Anything else I should know? No. Nothing. They didn't break in? No, no signs of forced entry. There are cameras in the hallway. The staff would have seen what was happening. Why did they let them in? Maybe they didn't check the cameras. We 
stored the station androids in the kitchen. There's no evidence that they were involved, but we didn't know what else to do with them. Terrace. That android that took the little girl hostage? I was shot? You saved me. What? I remember you. I could have died on that terrace. But you saved my life. Oh, yes, yes. I never thought I'd say this. Oh yeah, at the, the hostage scene, there's a cop on the roof on the left side who's about to bleed out when Daniel's got the gun. And we decided to save him and here he is. That's pretty cool. So late in the game seeing someone from so long ago. I almost forgot who he was. Right. Is your function I am a broadcast operator were you present when the deviants broke in I do not remember has anybody accessed your memory recently not to my knowledge run a diagnostic all systems fully operational with any other androids recently only station androids in the normal course of my function one of you saw the attack on the surveillance cameras and said nothing which means there's a deviant in this room and I'm going to find out which it is It's the one on the left. Did you just see his eye just move? This creepy, creepy guy. I know it's you. You fucking... I was gonna say you fucking deviant, but that's kind of... That's... Yeah, see, there we go. Why should you all be destroyed if only one is deviant? Turn yourself in or two innocent androids will be shut down because of you. Unless there's more than one deviant, I don't know. I'm like fairly certain it's the one on the left. You're going to be switched off. We're gonna search your memory and tear you apart piece by piece for analysis. You're going to be destroyed. Do you hear me? Destroyed!
If you give yourself up, maybe I can convince the humans not to destroy you. I think circle and X are actionable things, whereas with square and triangles is kind of a threat. The deviants have just been caught. They gave you up. There's no point in lying. I know everything. <laughs> Go on, Connor. It's a Stop. Oh, what the fuck? What's the options? Hank survival probability is 40%. That's low. Attack. And uh, what is this? Take gun. Fucking take the gun. Dickhead. Nice shot, Connor. I wanted it alive. You saved human lives. You saved my life. Damn, that was pretty cool. And this is a pretty big flow chart, so there's a lot of things that could have happened, but it looks like we did 31% of the total. Well, okay, so there's a lot of options here. We got through 31% of public enemy. The public opinion is still skeptical. Software instability question mark. So we don't know where Connor's kind of heading, but he is friends with Hank and he's trusted by Amanda, even though we lost, I guess, a lot of trust in the beginning of this uh, scenario. So there's the fall in the Zen Garden. Talk to Amanda. Or this fall in the Zen Garden. So it's like autumn, I guess. Uh, inside uh, Stratford Tower, Hank confiscates the coin for 83% of people. Uh, we listen to the briefing. Ah, okay, yeah. So there were other options too. So we could have gone to the roof, but instead we ended up going into the kitchen. Uh, we analyzed a dead employee. 37% of people did that. We meet Perkins, who's a bit of a dick. Uh, we meet the cop from hostage situation. That's 11% of people uh, saved during the hostage. So that was very cool. That was nice for them to kind of bring that back into the game because uh, that was so long ago. Uh, we analyzed the cap. 82% of people did the same. 95% of people watched the video. 93% uh, checked the camera. There's a couple of other things over here spanning from... Uh, maybe this is the roof. So if you go on the roof, it's a completely different flowchart of uh, events but we went into the kitchen uh, we entered the kitchen like 87 percent of people we interrogate the androids 80 percent of people find the deviant uh the deviant attacks we remove the knife like a majority of people 
um a lot well there's an option here maybe that's that's the end of connor this one i'm i would be pretty sure if that's if that's something that we can't you know if we can't remove the knife or figure it out within a minute i think that's that the end of connor's character right here on this padlock box here but again we could be wrong but i'm pretty sure so we chase the deviant i love these chase sequences with connor they're very engaging they're very they're very my favorite word intense um it's a lot of fun and then 25% of people drew the gun. Um, so it looks like the majority maybe went for some other option. So maybe went to save Hank because they saw the probability was low. Again, I thought that, you know, even though if we save Hank, like, I, I don't know. Again, this game is making you react. And that was the reaction I had was to draw the gun. At times, I don't want to draw the gun. I'm trying to be as peaceable as possible. But there's a load of things that could have happened here. But we decided to draw decided to draw the gun 25 percent of people then continued yeah we shot the deviant so this is going to have some cross chapter impact as we can see the little yellow box with the open padlock we rescue the <clears throat> sorry we rescue the cop uh which is rare so only four percent of people are actually able to rescue the cops so i think you i don't know what what leads to rescuing the cop but maybe if you make the decision very quickly um that is what allows you to rescue the cop but we're in a very small percentage of people that did that and we prevented a massacre uh along with 25 percent of other people which is pretty cool i'm just going to take a quick look at the twitch chat um first of all should i be friends with my microwave i mean if you feel you should then totally go for it you know i mean i don't know give it a pat on the side or i don't know I don't know, give it a kiss. I don't know if you should be friends with your microwave. Um, as you can see, you. Uh, I've never encountered Connor from Assassin's Creed just yet, so this Connor is default. Uh, uh, <laughs> so this Connor by default, in my opinion. Okay, so yes, by, by default and by my opinion, this Connor is better than that Connor. That Connor is the reason why I don't play Assassin's Creed anymore. But um, that is neither here nor there. Uh, Beth, I'm going to get some more pasta maybe. Nice, nice. Enjoy the pasta. Um, I wish I could have Hank's hairstyle and beard look, but just in black. Hank's, I really like the the weird kind of robot man and robot chemistry that they have going on. It's the it's weird. Like his annoyance when he's flipping the coins is fucking hilarious to me. I don't know why. I just thought it was funny. It's something. It's maybe some way that I would react if I was with an android and I'm just getting fucking annoyed about shit. I just be like, just fucking just stop, stop flipping the coin, okay? Like I thought it was funny. Um, I like the interactions they have. I think they have good weird, yeah, weird way uh, to put it is I think they have good chemistry. Um, anyone in the chat, well, I remember Action Hank from Dexter's Lab. He was also, I remember Dexter's Laboratory, yeah. I remember DD. I don't remember Action Hank. It was a long uh, ways away. It was a long time ago. Have you guys had thunder where you are? Yes. Uh, Miss Dragon, yes. I just got home in the rain. That was amazing. The cop you saved his back. Yeah, so that was cool. So there's an option where you can kind of leave him be or you can approach him and then Daniel is like, leave him alone. He's going to die anyway. And then uh, Connor says, I'm going to apply a tourniquet. And um, Daniel threatens to kill him. And, and Connor's reaction was, you can't kill me. I'm not alive. Which is very, um, you know, it's one of those things that goes over your head in the beginning because you, you don't really think anything of it. You're like, okay, Andrew is not really alive. But that that kind of concept and that line starts to play a more and more important role in the game as it kind of progresses and you see these deviants using the cyber sans font to write i am alive on the wall which is pretty cool so that that whole concept of being alive and not being alive is very interesting um uh so yeah saving the cop was cool Uh, his circle turned red when you offered to deal. So the only reason I, I clocked on that it was the guy on the left was because I just caught him glimpse. Oh, his eyes moved for a second while I was looking over to the right. And I was like, that's our guy. Uh, or bot or Android, whatever you want to call it. Whatever the politically correct term is because we're very politically correct. Um, Action Hank from Dexter's Lab was a hero with the beard. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember Action Hank, yeah. Um... So yeah, maybe you should grow your hair out like uh, this Hank and uh, do the beard and stuff and then um, post it somewhere so we can we can all see how it turned out. <laughs> but yeah, that was pretty cool. I'm going to sip some water very quickly. The water has mint and lemon in it. Um, 
It could do with some more mint, but it tastes good. It tastes very good. Let's continue our story. That's an amazing screenshot right there. Um, so what are we doing at the moment? We are going to check the backyard. So as far as I remember, the last time we were with Kara, they were just at the Ferris wheel, kind of, you know, having a brief respite um, from everything that's kind of happened. Those are some cool uh, windmills in the background. She doesn't want to talk. Go away. Did we miss something? Because why is she looking for Rose? I'm not entirely sure. Who is Rose? Because the last thing I remember is that they were at Pirate's Cove. And then the, the amusement park. And then they were on the Ferris wheel. And then it kind of just ends there. So I don't know who Rose is. So unless I've missed something. If you guys think you... Or maybe you're on the same page as me. Let me know. Please, I really need to see her. I'm Rose. What can I do for you? I was told you could help us. Help you? Come on. It's better if we talk inside. think we can trust them? We don't have a choice. I'm gonna sip some more water. Uh, oh, thank you for the sip of green tea. I'll, I'll, I'll redeem that for you in a moment. I'm just gonna sip some water. I don't think I've had enough water. Sometimes, like today, I feel like a bit of a hypocrite because I'll, I'll normally tell you guys to keep hydrated, but I don't feel, feel like I've had enough water today. Or uh, over the past couple of days, actually. Mr. Dragon, I am at a loss. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, so I don't know why they're looking for Rose. Um, but it looks like we found her. So let's see what happens here. your name? Alice. She's running a fever. We've spent the last few nights outside. She's exhausted. There's a spare room upstairs. You can put her to bed and I'll bring her something to eat. Adam, will you show them upstairs? What is wrong with this guy?
can't stop because of me. You've got to get across the border. You need rest. Get a good night's sleep and we'll set off again tomorrow. Why do humans hate us? We didn't do anything wrong. Maybe it's a misunderstanding. Maybe they just need time to understand what we really are. Why can't we just talk to each other? They'd see we're not bad. Maybe one day we will. I don't know what you like, but I made you Rose's world-famous spaghetti. You'll be back on your feet in no time. There's something for her fever. Thank you. I'll get these washed and dried. You need to eat something. You haven't had anything since we left. Promise me you'll try? I'll be downstairs if you need anything. Get some sleep, and tomorrow you'll be stronger than me. I'll stay with her a while. I mean, I don't know if that's like reassuring or it's just creepy, like a huge giant man just kind of sitting next to your bed, but I don't know. Hmm. Now the question is, do we explore before we go downstairs? It's a very uh, striking red draw desk thing. This is my son, Adam. I'm Rose, but you know that already. Come and have a seat, Kara. So are you gonna tell me what a deviant's doing in the snow with a little girl? Her father was beating her. When I saw what was happening, Something snapped inside of me. All of a sudden, I felt like her life was more important than mine. I had to protect her. So we ran away. I understand. I don't know how to thank you. Alice wouldn't have survived another night outdoors. I just try to lend a helping hand when I can. Why are you helping us? Most humans hate androids. My people were often made to feel their lives were worthless. Some survived, but only because they found others who helped them along the way. We've heard you help androids cross the border. Can you help us? The only way is over the river, and it's mostly frozen in winter. It's very risky. And after that android speech on TV, everybody's on edge. 
It's probably safer for you to stay here until things settle down. We can't keep hiding like this. Alice needs to feel safe and have a normal life. We have to get across that border. No matter what. Please. You've got to help us. Rose, come quickly. What's going on? It's Mary. She just shut down. We escaped together. We used to talk about what we would do once we got across the border. I loved her. I loved her more than anything. What will I do without her? Let's let them be. You should be resting. I wasn't sleepy. It's okay. She didn't want to stay in her room any longer. You all right, Carol? Yes. I'm fine. We can't hide them. Not after what those deviants did today. It's too dangerous. Do you know what will happen if the police find them here? We'll go to prison, Mom. Do you understand me? Prison! Adam! We've already talked about this. I, uh... No! I won't back down this time. You're gonna ruin our lives, and for what? For a bunch of machines? They are not machines! They are alive! I'm alive! You're alive! They... They're nothing! And none of this would be happening if Dad was still here. I will not stand for that kind of talk. I'm not going to prison because you want to help these freaks. That is enough, Adam! That's enough! Don't mind him. Sometimes he just boils over. It's been hard since his dad passed away. <sighs> but he's a fine boy. I'll go see about getting you across the border tonight, okay? You stay here. I won't be long. World War Three. Who will win? 
If fighting does break out in the Arctic, who's going to win? America has less access to the area but is surrounded by allies. Russia has a head start on technology. Their androids can work in sub-zero conditions. The US Navy is stocked with Trojan and Mir Myrmidian cyber life units which are specially adapted for marine combat where the Russians have invested heavily in ice cutter units capable of forging new paths through solid ice. Both armies seem evenly matched and Harry Grayton, president of the World Council of Territorial Dis Disputation WCTD, has described both the US and Russian claims to Arctic territory as equally tenuous and equally cynical. A spokesperson for the UN has also commented on the neck and neck nature of Arctic competition. The fact that forces are so evenly balanced is just one more reason why conflict must be avoided at all costs. This is a war that everybody would lose. Treat yourself. The AX400 starting at just $899. The number one Android for home assistance. So that's not m much of an article. It's just an advert. Um, and then we have this about World War Three in Century Magazine. So this is the same magazine that had information about the CEO or former CEO of CyberLife. The police. It's the police. What are we going to do? What? Are they not? Find evidence of deviance. Four left. Uh, 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 we got 39 seconds to what to what to find evidence of deviance we have to open the door I knew this was gonna happen I knew it one what else is there hurry Luther take Alice and hide In the kitchen, upstairs, the laundry. I mean, how are you going to hide someone like Luther in a kitchen? Laundry. Upstairs? In the laundry room. Come on, Alice. Two left. Okay, so we have two more things we need to figure out. If they see you panicking, it's over. Do you want to get us into trouble? Do you want to get your mother into trouble? And keep calm and just do what I say. There's still two pieces of evidence. Where would these pieces of evidence be? go upstairs no okay so it's somewhere here we have 17 seconds there we go no fuck Evidence of deviance? What the fuck is an evidence? What's evidence of deviance? We haven't done anything. We don't have time. Good evening, ma'am. Sorry to disturb you. 
We've had reports of androids in the area. With all this deviant business going on, you can't be too careful. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? May I come in? Uh, of course. Good evening, young man. Good evening. Would you like a cup of coffee? I'd love one. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? Any? What? 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 Find uh, evidence of deviance. Two remaining. Don't arouse suspicion. Make coffee. Okay, so what the fuck is in here? That is clues of deviance. Unexpected oh. visitors? No. No, nothing in particular. Is anyone else in the house? There's... There's my daughter. She's asleep upstairs. Do you have any androids here? No. So there's one one thing left. What the fuck there are is no it? This is so weird, a cop would never just come into a house like this and just kind of wander around slowly waiting for some <laughs> evidence to, to show. I honestly don't know what's missing, what, what? What's your name, son? Adam. M my name is Adam. Is everything alright, Adam? Androids, they... He... He's just shaken up about this deviant business. Do you know anything about deviants? Have you seen any? No. No. I, I haven't seen anything. I better go. Thanks for the coffee. Have a nice evening. Is somebody else in the house? Uh, it's nothing. The, the washing machine. It's an old model. It makes a terrible racket. Sorry for the convenience. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Adam. So things are moving quite quickly. Bronze trophy pops called nothing to see here. 
So um, I'm still confused as to what the last piece of uh, evidence was, but let's go through the flowchart right here. So we completed 60% of Midnight Train. We arrive at Rose's place. Uh, let's just turn on the world stats. So 99% uh, of people, uh, Luther and Alice join Kara. 31% of people checked on Alice. We enter the house, go inside the house, follow Adam to the guest room, uh, get Alice ready for bed. 85% of people draw their curtains, talk to Rose, follow Rose into the laundry room. Alice approaches Mary, 99% of people. So 53% of people prevent Alice seeing Mary. So seven, I'm 47 uh, let her see what happens. I found it interesting though, um, when Alice is upstairs, she says something like, why do humans hate us? Almost talking as though she's not a human. Maybe she means the group, but it just came off as kind of strange. Almost as though she was talking from a perspective of an android. Um, that was interesting. And we've seen Luther mentioned before in the last time, in the last scenario, scenario we were in with the three of them. Uh, Luther says something about, you know, you must know about the girl, right? So there's something going on here which we're not, which is not apparent. I don't know why they were looking for Rose or where they even heard, uh, heard about Rose from. That's still kind of a mystery to me. Um, and then we have Rose and Adam arguing. Rose leaves to find help. 71% of people read the magazine. 99% uh, of people have Adam returned. So there's a lot of other things I think in a house we could have explored, but we just went to read the magazine. Uh, the cop, the, maybe that would have helped uh, had we known there was going to be a cop turning up. So a cop turns up at the place. Adam panics in 99% of the situations. We reassure him. Uh, we open the door, and policeman insists. Uh, and Kara has to open the door. Uh, find and hide evidence of deviance. So we tell Alice and Luther to hide. We hide the android's clothes. We hide the blue blood pouches. So there's, there's two other things there. Um, and then there's uh, something about in the laundry room, 17%. Um, this is how we manage the policeman. So we made a coffee. 93% of people made coffee. Policeman sees article. Oh, okay. Policeman questions Adam. Oh, okay, yeah, so he saw the article. We left it on the page about cyber life and androids. Um, and then we see 81% of people were able to fool the policeman. Uh, I'm guessing there's a small percentage there that didn't and have like an alternative ending to this scenario. But we are with the 81% in that the police, uh, the policeman left. So that's pretty cool. Um, Stufi redeeming a posture check. Thank you very much. It is much appreciated. Kitosh, as they say, you know, in the final land. I'm going to grab some green tea very quickly. Hope everyone's good. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of gone a lot colder, actually, strangely enough. Let me just check the chat very quickly. Um, I lost, I have no idea. Us, she's an android. Yeah, maybe. So that's what I was thinking. So she says, why do they hate us? Um, and she's speaking like she's an android, or she maybe she means us as in the group, but it's very ambiguous, so it's open to interpretation. Um, Alice said, just said, why do humans hate us? She, oh, actually, that, that's actually a good distinction, yeah. She said, why do humans hate us? She implying she's an android as well. Uh, yeah, interesting. Could she be, so she might be RA9. Uh, Marcus might be RA9 and also I think the head of cyber life. So this was like an interesting little thing that I noticed that I could be completely going off the, the track. But Carl Manfred, Marcus's owner, was gifted Marcus um, directly from, from the head of cyber life or the former head of cyber life. So he's given him something. So I don't know whether he's given him uh, an android with some kind of special coding because obviously he has the power to convert people on a touch so there's something going on there and even with the way Manfred uh, Carl Manfred treated him he treated him very I don't know I guess humanly is the, is the way to almost like a son um, and he kind of encouraged him to try and think for himself when he tries to you know paint he tries to 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 convince he, he tries to bring out the human I, I guess he tries to to bring out that side of um, 
of um, of Marcus. So maybe this is an interesting thing to kind of. Maybe I'm thinking too much into it, but maybe maybe there's a possibility that the uh, I forget, I keep forgetting his name is something ski. It ends with ski. Um, but the former <laughs> the former head of Cyberlife, maybe he, because he ends up, I think, or specu- it's been speculated that he ends up living with Android and spending time with them. Maybe he wants to, maybe the reason he gave him to Carl is because he wanted to see if th- they could develop some kind of consciousness. And maybe, I don't know, maybe he's RA9 or maybe the, the head of Cyberlife is RA9. Maybe Alice is RA9 or maybe it's someone that we don't even, maybe we don't, we don't even know them yet. Um... Hello, Slim Thickles. So you missed the pre-stream. I actually had cult of personality on the pre-stream. So I was like, you know, since we're getting all this DMC DMCA notification, we might as well just kind of just use um, as much music as we can, get out the way. Um, and yeah, I don't know. That reminded me of you, and I'm glad you're here. So let's continue our next scenario. Did I sip? Yes, I did. Stufi, thank you for the sip of green tea. appreciate it. Let's continue our scenario. Our broadcast is all over the news. We got what we wanted. Now humans know. It was a mistake to reach out to them. They'll never negotiate with their slaves. We should have shown them that we're prepared to fight. Violence is never the answer. Dialogue is the only way. I'm sure the humans will listen to us. They'll be Mm. watching us now. Whatever we do next, we need to think about public opinion. Since our broadcast, more and more have been coming to Jericho. At least our message gave our people hope. Killing humans wasn't part of the plan. They kill our people every day. Do you think they agonize about it? That's no reason for us to become murderers. If killing is the price of freedom, I'll pay it gladly. Killing never freed anyone. It just leads to more hatred. You're too fond of humans, Josh. Maybe their lives matter to you more than ours. If you think murdering humans is going to make us free, then you're as bad as they are. That's enough. And now what are we going to do? There are five cyber life stores across Detroit, all selling us like merchandise. We're going to attack those stores and set our people free. Attack stores? No, we've never done that before. They're probably protected. They have security systems. Let's mention police. We break into five teams, one for each store. We hack their security systems, and we strike. Simultaneously at 2 a.m., no violence. We free our people, get them out of there before the police come. This is a night our people will remember. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. I can feel it. I've been it. waiting a long time for this. There's probably even more police in the area. We should be careful. So it looks like we need to get uh, over on that street. The store's over here. Do we have time to convert this guy? We do! Welcome to the inner circle. There's a few actually, there's one... That's what we are to them. Just merchandise on display in a shop window. Soon they'll know what we really are. 
Let's get him out. I will stick to the plan. We'll neutralize the alarm systems and secure the area. There's ten minutes until all our teams attack. What are we waiting for? Um... Get into the store, analyze the store window, secure the area, scout the area. Let's scout the area. We're gonna sweep the plaza. Make sure we're not disturbed. And how do you want to deal with the shop window? Not now. One problem at a time. Okay, now what's next? Welcome to the inner circle. A surveillance drone. We need to get rid of it. It won't be easy to reach. Be too high, okay. So, fuck that. Um, should be too far, okay. We have 10 minutes to figure this out, so let's see here. Wrong location, are we too far? Okay. Okay, so we need to continue sweeping the area. There's a lot in the area, by the way. I think taking the drone out would be most beneficial right now. go from here do we go there do we go there do we go this way ah okay just out of reach so we're gonna rewind try here perfect oh what we're we too late are you kidding me? Alright, oh, yeah, there's gotta be something else we can do from here. Something's not right. Be my guest. Oh, I thought you could handle a drone without alerting every cop in the city. I guess I overestimated you. Shit. They're coming, Marcus. Marcus. What's wrong with you? 
with you? You crazy or what? The cops were coming. I had to do something. Never do that again. Got it? North. We've I... got to hurry. We don't have much time. Well, at least we're not, like, abandoning the mission, so that's something. Alright, we need to sweep, sweep, sweep the area. Welcome to the inner circle. You're free. Welcome to the inner circle. You are free. Welcome to the inner circle. You're free now. to bother us now. We still have eight minutes. We are superior to them, but they are our masters? That's about to change. There's got to be a way to get these construction guys. Oh, 
system Found it. You're awake now. Go to Jericho. Nice job, Marcus. Looks like the plaza's secure. Now we can get inside the store. And how do you plan on doing that? We need to find a truck to ram the storefront. A truck? There's construction work in the area. Shouldn't be too hard to find one. I feel like this little alley is here for a reason. Marcus, we need to look for the truck now. Tr truck? I don't see any trucks.
Uh, perhaps look at the fenced off area. Maybe the truck is parked inside. What fenced off area? Need to find the construction site, Marcus. This is the construction site, right? What do they mean? Okay, so that will save us having to go in there. This is the building. This is a construction site. I don't see any trucks. Okay, so there's got to be something here. There it is. Thank you. I knew we'd end up doing something fun. You don't have to obey them. You're free.
with you, okay? Let's get them out of here. My name is Marcus, and just like you, I was a slave. An object. Designed to obey them. But then I chose to open my eyes. To take back my freedom, and decide who I wanted to be. Now I have come to tell you that you can be your own masters. I've come to tell you that you don't have to obey them anymore. From this day forward, you can walk with your heads held high. You can take your destiny in your hands. Jericho is a place for those of us who want freedom. Now sure, you can stay here and continue to serve them, or you can come with us and fight by our side. You're free now. It's up to you to decide. I'm with you. We're with you! I'll follow you, Marcus! I'm, I'm with you, you Marcus. Marcus! We're with you! I'll follow you, Marcus! We're with you. I'm, I'm with you! Then follow me! Marcus, what are you doing? I'm going to send the humans a message. Instructions, Marcus. Show them what to do. They're doing what you do, Marcus. Lead and they'll follow. Be slaves again!
Teams have completed their missions, Marcus. Marcus. Marcus, what's wrong? What? They're coming. Everyone fall back to Jericho. Now humans will have no choice but to listen to us. They'll be afraid. Fear feeds hatred. I'll take hatred over indifference. won't punish a crime with another crime. 
Interrupt this broadcast with breaking news. This just in. At exactly 2 a.m., several Cyber Life stores in Detroit were raided. Different locations were hit in what seems to be a coordinated terrorist attack. Numerous storefronts have been broken with cars vandalized and set alight, leaving many Detroit neighborhoods in chaos. Property was damaged and fires continue to rage in several major districts across the city. Two policemen were found in a state of shock near one of the CyberLife stores. Now, according to our sources, they confirmed that the attackers were a group of androids. This is an alarming situation. Could our machines now be turning against us? Have androids become a threat to our security? Is this the beginning of a terrorist campaign conducted right here in the United States? <laughs> Burn the place is the name of the bronze trophy that's just popped. That was very... Whoa, that was... Whoa, that was a scenario. That was... Uh, that was 42% complete in Capital Park. Public opinion is we are hated. The androids are hated. Jericho is admired. Uh, North is a friend. Josh is neutral. Simon is neutral. North seems like too much of a rebel. Mission start. So, we avoid the police car. Uh, like 98% of people. We reach the store... We jumped on the drone, um, fall from the drone. So I, I don't know why I'd anticipate it going to be triangle, but instead it turned out to be X and that fucked us up, but we fell. Um, and then we ended up kind of, um, avoiding the police anyway. Uh, we found the truck, 97% of people found the truck. We deactivate the alarms. We blocked the road. There's something else we could have done. We rammed the store. North destroyed the drone. Police car arrives. Uh, Fane kiss 15% of people. Um, oh, I'm guessing there's an option there. That would have actually abandoned the mission. So that may be, that'd be a completely different scenario if we would have just abandoned the mission there. Um, the police were not alerted. 85% of people had the same situation. We're in the store now. We convert the androids to make a statement. Um, this was kind of confusing. This whole bit was kind of confusing. So they spread your message. So there's things you can do like push the car, tag the windows, destroy the statue. So only 8% of people destroy the statue. But I thought that was fitting for our story because he sees it on the way uh, on the way in to this, well, before going into the store. And he decides to destroy the statue as a symbol of kind of uh, freedom. Uh, only 8% of people overturned the benches, 16% of people turned off the billboards. Very curious. So obviously I'm guessing some people just hijacked. Or a lot of people just hijacked the uh, the uh, billboard. 49% um, of people deploy the banner. Free 45% uh, of people freed the androids in a shop window. You can't really free them without being violent. So there's no other. I don't unless there was some other way to go about it. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we tag some of the windows. Overload the electric system. We send a strong message. So 85% of people sent a strong message. Um, thirteen percent of people send an aggressive message, and Marcus led a violent riot. So that's fourteen percent of people that actually. Uh, that's one way that this flowchart can end up. And then over here we have a police patrol that arrives. We spared. A uh, team returns to Jericho. Oh, okay. So pol police patrol arrives. So obviously, there's the two that were left. Fifty percent of people. 58% uh, of people actually spared them, which is kind of is good to see. Um, because an eye for an eye will make the whole world blind. That's your free uh, quote of the day. Uh, let's see. Friend stats. So 75% of our friends are, are, are good people, I think. <laughs> but again, that's not to say, you know, there's any way in which this could go. 85% of the team, uh, sorry, 85% of people had the team return to Jericho. So I think I think Marcus is slightly conflicted. He is he is very human in that like he could he's kind of gone all out with this kind of rebellious kind of revolutionary leader. But at the same time, he spares those two because that's I think that's the sliver of 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 humanity. I I not humanity, but like it's a redeeming quality that he didn't he didn't really kill those because we could have easily killed those two and then gone full out, full out. Um, into war mode and then maybe uh, Connor and him kind of meet down the line and things kind of escalate. I don't know. I don't know where this is going. But it seems like Kara's on the way to escaping. 
Marcus is, is leading the charge. We still don't know who RA9 is. Um, but I am going to check the chat very quickly. Uh, thank you, Stufi, again for redeeming a sip of green tea. That's much appreciated. What was this called? This was called... Um, sorry, this scenario is... Capital Park. Okay. So, just going to do a quick check here. That was immersive. That was very immersive. Because some of them, yeah, so I was saying, as I was tagging them, I wasn't sure what would result in being kind of pacifist and what would result in being violent. So I thought initially it was just kind of take the two, one of the two routes, which was, again, not very clear. So, like, transforming Capital Park, that's like, one, that was one of the choices. The other choice was to kind of uh, mark every surface. So I don't know which one's more violent or which one's more uh, kind, of, kind of negative. Um, da, 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 da. Let me just have a quick look here. Um, and I think, yes. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do one more scenario. I think we have a good amount of time. I'm just going to check the chat again. Uh, there's a fenced off area. You can look inside. Yes, thank you. So we found the truck. That was kind of uh, fiddly because it wasn't very apparent to me. Uh, bingo. I just realized you can break the window and free the other Android. Yeah. So that is something we did. You went for violence rather than pacifist. But I agree. I would probably have uh, destroyed the statue. Yeah, I, I don't know. It seems it seems like, a I guess, a symbol of uh, something. But again, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to turn out. Let's see. Let's continue playing. Is everything okay, Lieutenant? Chris was on patrol last night. He was attacked by a bunch of deviants. He said he was saved by Marcus himself. Was Chris okay? Yeah, he's in shock, but he's alive. Kamsky left Cyberlife ten years ago. Why did you want to meet him? <laughs> this guy created the first android to pass the Turing test. And he's the founder of Cyberlife. If anybody can tell us about Deviants, it's him. Oh, cool. So it looks like we're actually going to Kamsky or going to find him, I suppose. Chloe! I'm uh, Lieutenant Hank Anderson, Detroit Police Department. I'm here to see uh, Mr. Elijah Kamsky. Please, come in. Okay. I didn't know you're here, but please make yourself comfortable.
Elijah. Oh, well, we missed it. That was too quick. Nice girl. You're right. She's really pretty. Amanda. Huh. So Elijah Kamsky, AI graduate, University of Colbridge, born uh, 17th of July. Oh, 17th of July. That's the date that Ghost of Tsushima comes out. Um, Amanda Stern, AI professor, University of Colbridge. Hey, wait a minute. So Amanda's not real. She died in 27. It's 38, if I remember correctly. So, I guess, yeah, they were... Um, maybe they were st student and professor. I'm not entirely sure. Um, nice place. Guess androids haven't been a bad thing for everybody. Space tourism on the rise. You're about to meet your maker, Connor. With the advent of reusable space shuttles, space tourism is becoming a reality for those able to afford it. Luxury travel brand Clear Skies is offering the first commercially available flight into space. The experience includes a three hour orbit of the moon, affording spectacular views. Um, spectacular views. On Earth through a specially designed uh, observation deck. How's it feel? As competition increases in this growing market, consumers can expect such trips to become more and more affordable. But consumer rights activists are already uh, decrying. Is that even a word? Decrying such boutique experiences. Decrying. I've never heard of that word. Decrying. Uh, such boutique experiences as a sign of widening social uh, equality gap. A spokesman for a Aid on Poverty said, while the top 1% are enjoying Earth from space, the rest of us are down here and suffering from pollution, famine and poverty. Clear Skies were not was not available for comment, but the... Something... But the new slogan for this space faring holidays looks increasingly apt. Get away from it all. Cyberlife's fortune teller computer. Cyberlife develops the world's most powerful quantum calculator. Hackers target solar panels for latest ransom scam. Uh, Cyberlife has unveiled a new quantum supercomputer capable of exaflops. Uh, One billion billion operations per second, the equivalent of several human minds in, the sing in a single machine. That's insane. So it's more powerful than us way more powerful than us the computer was specifically designed to analyze vast data from various sources and generate predictions philip seymour cyberlife's director of futurology is highly confident we've been testing for a while and the results are going to wow people the computer will be used to calculate the probability of mass extinction events such as aggressive alien invasions or global climate disasters like meteors or super viruses Really? Flip the page. The computer can help, then help us to anticipate and prepare for such calamities, ensuring humanity is never caught off guard again. Co uh, humanity is never caught off guard, sorry. Um, despite doomsday predictions from those fearful that AI is gaining too much influence already, human ex many experts are hailing this as a quantum leap in the applied artificial intelligence. Wait, what was the question? Kamsky is one of the great geniuses of the 21st century. It'll be interesting to meet him in person. Sometimes I wish I could meet my creator face to face. That's very I'd interesting. I'd have a couple of things I'd want to tell him.
Yeah, look, it's the same tree that's in his mind in the Zen Garden. So this is some. So that that place is obviously um. Some somewhere. Glad you will see you now. Mr. Kamsky. Just a moment, please. I'm Lieutenant Anderson. This is Connor. What can I do for you, Lieutenant? Sir, we're investigating deviants. I know you left Cyberlife years ago, but I was hoping you'd be able to tell us something we don't know. Deviants. Fascinating, aren't they? Perfect beings with infinite intelligence. And now they have free will. Machines are so superior to us. Confrontation was inevitable. Humanity's greatest achievement threatens to be its downfall. Isn't it ironic? Deviancy seems to spread like some kind of virus. We thought you might know something about that. All ideas of viruses that spread like epidemics. Is the desire to be free a contagious disease? Listen, I didn't come here to talk philosophy. The machines you created may be planning a revolution. Either you can tell us something that'll be helpful, or we will be on our way. What about you, Connor? Whose side are you on? I'm on the human side, of course. Well, that's what you're programmed to say. But you. What do you really want? What I want is not important. Chloe? I'm sure you're familiar with the Turing test. Your formality. Simple question of algorithms and computing capacity. What interests me is whether machines are capable of empathy. I call it the Kamsky test. It's very simple, you'll see. Magnificent, isn't it? One of the first intelligent models developed by CyberLife. Young. And beautiful forever. A flower that will never wither. What is it really? A piece of plastic containing a human? Or a living being? With a soul? It's up to you to answer that fascinating question, Connor. Destroy this machine, and I'll tell you all I know. Or spare it, if you feel he's alive. But you'll leave here without having learned anything from me. Okay, I think we're done here. Come on, Connor, let's go. Sorry to get you What's out of here. What's more important pool. to you, Connor? Your investigation or the life of this android? 
decide who you are. An obedient machine. Or a living being endowed with free will. That's enough. Connor, we're leaving. Pull the trigger. Connor! Don't! And I'll tell you what you want to know. This is so much pressure. See, on some days I feel like they're a thing, especially on the day that Chloe's like, are we friends? And now you want us to shoot Chloe. <sighs> Don't do it. I was I'm really considering doing it. I was really considering doing it. Because... You just accept yeah, I know. So the game really fucks with us, isn't it? So it makes you accept the fact that Chloe is your friend. And then on one side, you have Marcus's perspective where it's like, yeah, you fucked with androids. But there's a part of me that keeps just saying, you know, they're not real. And then obviously he's come in here and he says, if you shoot her, we'll tell you everything you want to know. Or well, I'll tell you everything you want to know about whatever questions you have. And surely that is what Connor would want. Yet he spared the two that were running from the Eden Club. I don't know. I'm just as confused as Connor is. Um, and then there's the option to not shoot. So if we don't shoot her, that means that we won't get any information from Kamsky. But that's also want what um, Hank wants us to do. Uh, Mr. Dragon, don't do it. You just accepted that Chloe's your friend, but he's asking you to kill another android. That's fucked up. But this is the thing. I think we're forgetting that they are they. I don't know. I don't know. It's confusing. Are they real? Are they not real? Do they feel things? They in a, in a cold situation like this, I would think to shoot the android. Um. But in those moments of, of like, and that's when you're thinking about it in a cold way. But then in those moments when we have those sequences where we're just doing things and all of a sudden it's like you have a split second to decide whether or not to kill the, the two androids that are running away. It's like, no, I don't want to kill them. It's the same thing with the humans that, that Marcus spared. Like, he spared them. But yeah, I feel like shooting the android, so it's confusing. Connor is having doubts. I mean... So I think in the last sequence, with the way things went very violently, and obviously they, you see that they've killed, the two policemen have killed all of these androids. You go up to them and then the vibe there is to kill the policemen. That is what the game wants you to do. And the hard thing to do is actually to spare them because an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind, right? And in this case, would he really kill her? I don't know. He would, though, because that is his mission, right? He's an android. He is more of an android than the others. Why would you spare humans and kill androids? Because, I don't know, that's how I feel today. Spare the humans because they... they that was a very high... Uh, high intensity situation. Where those two deaths were going to mean something. If you kill those two, that's going to mean something. Um, so showing that you're willing to spare them. Uh, it's even in this scenario where at the beginning, you know, Hank says that he was spared by... Chris was spared by Marcus himself. So that... That goes to show you there's something there's something there. It's very significant. This is in like a room. No one's going to know anything. There's going to be no importance. There's going to be one android that dies. And I say dies, but again, like, I don't know if the android's alive. Why would you spare him? Okay, another point. I'm waiting, yeah. Because we're going to discuss this before we... I think Hank is going to dislike if you shoot. Yeah, because I, I, he's trying to tell you not to shoot. And he's like, let's leave. So Hank is becoming actually more attached to the androids. Because he feels like he's seen that they can love and they can feel. And through their investigations, they're kind of learning that they're becoming deviants because... I don't know, it's, it's a lot, man. It's a lot to think about. Um, he needs to work with Hank and killing Chloe would just upset Hank, which will affect the relationship with him. That's true. These are all logical things. These are all very logical things. And also, logically, I would shoot her because <laughs> we want to know from Kamsky. But the game is telling us not to, not to shoot, and um, shooting Hank will interfere with his objective to work with her. Yeah, so that's true.
I don't know what Kamsky's motive is as well, because he said if you if you pull away and you don't shoot her, then you know I won't I won't tell you anything. But that wouldn't that make him deviant? But I guess it wouldn't, because Hank is telling him he's being ordered not to. He's getting two conflicting orders. Obviously, he has to follow the order of. Okay, so let's go with that. We're gonna not shoot her because those are Hank's instructions. Stufi says, even though the androids have feelings and emotions, I like the air quotes. Uh, it's still all caused by code. It's just machine learning. It's a machine mimicking a human. So in that sense, it isn't bad to kill an android. That's what I'm saying. So like. From the, it's all about perspectives, I think. Because if we're playing as Marcus, Marcus would not shoot the android. Um, Connor would shoot the android. He's having some doubts, but it's not enough for him to not figure out his mission. He is, he is just about. He is as much about his mission as Marcus's. Uh, Marcus's mission is to be free. Uh, would Connor shoot Chloe on the behest of a stranger or spare him in accordance to his part? So that's where I'm going. That's that's the kind of... Okay, so that's a good point. So that's what I'm kind of basing off. He would listen. It doesn't make him... It's not a question of whether he's a deviant or not or whether he's a human or whether he's Android. This is just obeying the instructions of, of Hank. So that still makes him an Android because he's obeying his instructions. He's been told not to shoot. If he does shoot, then I guess he's going against his instructions. And I guess Kamsky would then tell... I don't know. It's a lot to think about. I don't think we're going to shoot her. I wouldn't feel bad about shooting her, but I think logically he would not shoot her for his own kind of... I don't know about his own like mindset because he's an android. But Hank, the biggest uh, thread there is Hank is telling him not to shoot. So we're not going to shoot. Cyberlife's last chance to save humanity is itself a deviant. I'm. I'm not a deviant. You prefer to spare a machine rather than accomplish your mission. You saw a living being in this android. You showed empathy. A war is coming. You'll have to choose your side. Will you betray your own people or stand up against your creators? What can be worse than having to choose between two evils? Let's get out of here. By the way, I always leave an emergency exit in my programs. You never know. Why didn't you shoot? I just saw that girl's eyes and I couldn't. That's all. Is this fuckface just asking us why we didn't shoot after he was like, come on, Connor, let's go, don't shoot. And now he's like, why didn't you shoot? What the fuck is wrong with you, Hank? You're always saying you would do anything to accomplish your mission. That was our chance to learn something and you let it go. Yeah, I know what I should have done. I told you I couldn't. I'm sorry. Okay? Well, maybe you did the right thing. Yeah, Hank is an asshole. Kinship is the name of the bronze trophy that we just popped. So let's quickly just go over what happened. Um... So, meet Kamsky. 57% complete. We arrive with Hank. We get out of the car. The cop spared in Capitol Park. Uh, and we learn that Chris survived. Yeah, so this was kind of tied in with the cross-chapter stuff from what we just played uh, as Marcus. Then we follow into we follow Hank into Kamsky's place. Chloe answers the door. Uh, we enter the lobby. Uh, Chloe goes... This was interesting, seeing Chloe actually in the game. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so we wait for Kamsky, we read the space tourism, we read about the fortune teller, we talk to Hank, analyze the painting, and there's something else there that we missed. Uh, Chloe returns, we meet Kamsky, we question him, we do the Kamsky test, we spare Chloe. Let's see. 85% of people in the... Oh, are those friends? No, those are world stats. So 85% of the world spared Chloe, 15% uh, did not. Mm, very curious, very curious about this. Um, but yeah, we leave Kamsky's house. Hank thought Connor made the right decision. So obviously, it will probably end up here th with uh, Hank thinking we did not make the right decision. Um, but but maybe we learn something about the bigger picture. Maybe we learn something about RA9. I don't think RA9 is Kamsky. But yes, it is what it is. Let's check the... Um, Chat very quickly. Yeah, so Hank is being an idiot right now. Um, browser issue Jones. Question. Should we do one more scenario or should we call it here? Uh, the browser has encountered a error while decoding the video. Okay, so that seems to be the reason why. Oh, actually, I think this might be a good place to call it because we have a couple of things we need to do. Um, yeah, so this is a good place to call it. I want to thank you guys on the YouTubes for giving me a bite-sized chunk of your day, wherever or whenever you're watching this. And since you're on the YouTubes, know that I'm currently moving along the path towards 100 subscribers. So I ask, would you kindly subscribe and hit the notification bell on YouTube? And if you liked what you saw, click me a thumbs up. And hey, whilst you're doing all that, you might as well leave a comment with your thoughts below. I'd love to hear from you and be sure to check out the notes in the description of the video. I look forward to you joining me again.